So now I want to show you some information about the terminal. The Kila terminal we developed uh, at CMCC. Uh, it is a presentation much more user oriented, so I'll show you information about the commands you can use in order to interact with the server and the uh, software stack deployed uh, on your machine using Ophelia. So, as I said in my previous presentation, Ophelia uh, exploits a very, very complex architecture formed by many layers. So in order to hide this complexity to the user, we want to find an effective way to interact with Ophelia without making the user scared of its complexity. So the solution is to develop the Ophelia uh, terminal. It is a common interpreter in no guy like Bash. <coughs> so it is a client for the Ophelia framework. Specifically, it interacts with the server exchanging JSON message inside some requests. So, as I said before, the Ophelia terminal is a commands interpreter in your view, like the bash shell. It's a client for the Ophelia framework. It simplifies client-server interaction within the Ophelia framework, making it easier to take advantage of all Ophelia operators. It can manage history for the user. It offers lots of documentation features, specific environment variables and commands, and so on. It is easy to install and is simple enough for a novice and at the same time powerful enough for an expert user. This is a basic use case of the utilization of the Ophelia terminal. So a client start the terminal with or without login parameters, then it can launch commands. Commands could be executed directly on the client or are sent to the server when the output are ready. When the outputs are ready, these outputs are sent back to the user. So if you want to enter in the figure terminal, you have to use this statement of phterm dash u with your username, dash p with your password, dash capital H with your server host, IP of the server host, dash capital P with the related port to connect to. You can also launch directly ophterm command without specify any of these parameter because you can rely on shell variable shell variables of ph user or ph password d so you can define these variables inside your shell environment in order to avoid to type all these parameters you can also execute a command without entering in the ph term environment with the dash E parameter. So we developed a virtual file system in order to store, to manage all the cube belonging of each user. So you can define, create your folders. Inside your folders, you can create your containers, which are able to manage cubes with the same grid, with the same structure, with the same dimensions. Inside each container, we have our data cubes. So concerning the OPH term environment, we can distinguish between predefined variables and predefined commands. Predefined variables are related to the call or the prompt, username, password, as I said before, server address and server port, and so on. Predefined commands are to get the description the description of a command or variable using the help, history, to manage the history of commands, env, to list the environment variables, and so on. So, if you want to, to launch, to submit an operator to the server, you can use this kind of statement, 
So OPH operator, a certain operator you want to use, with a list of, para of parameters separated by semicolon. So we feed the operator on the left, for example, OPH list, and the sequence of arguments pass it to the operator. If you are sure, you can use the manual that is another operator, OPH man. You can use so OPH man function equal to particular operator name. You want to understand. Or if you want to show information about a primitive, you can use primitive name with function type primitive. This is the output of the OPH man operator concerning, if I remember well, the merge OPH, the merge operator. So you can see an abstract description of the operator. And then the list of the arguments, the parameters you have to pass to the operator. And you can see also if a uh, the argument is mandatory or not, eventually with a default value defined. Some special arguments you can pass to the input string, exec mode, if you want to specify that the execution will be synchronous or asynchronous. A number of cores or we will want to use during the execution. Default is use only one core. Session ID to specify your session. Carol working dir to specify the working directory. And the cube. So the input, the cube you want to manage, you want to manipulate. As for the others, you can use environment variables to set and to store this information, OPH session ID, exec mode, and so on. So this is an example in a synchronous mode. So we can use OPH operator, exec mode asynchronous, inside the terminal or also by the bash shell. In this, in both the case, we have the output of the request with the job ID of your execution. This is a non-blocking request and no response will be rendered. In synchronous mode, with exec mode sync, you have not only your request and your job ID, but also the response. So this is a blocking request, response rendered to standard output. So OPH term provides many features to help the user to use Ophidia. One of these is the autocompletion. So using the tab key, you can autocomplete a specific command. You can use also this procedure to complete the environment variable, for example, OPH use to complete OPH user. Moreover, you can use tab to complete a specific path inside the file system. You can use also tab twice tab in order to perform the auto completion over all the feed operators. So in this case, we have the list of all the operators, OPH underscore plus twice tab, we have the list of all the operators available in the system. Once again, consent concerning the autocompletion, you can use it also to autocomplete the arguments. So you can type OPH operator 
with some argument, the system are able to complete your string and using twice tab, you have the list of all the arguments for the specific operator with the double star in case of if this argument is mandatory. The default value be between parentheses and between square brackets, the list of all the admitted values for this argument. Moreover, also the values related to a particular argument could be autocompleted. Then you can use also the shift plus tab key as you can do inside the Windows PowerShell, for example. And in this case, the uh, autocompletion will cycle uh, over all the possible matches. So, for example, sync, async, and so on. So, I want to spend two words concerning the XML uh, necessary. We need to perform all the operation, all the operators. So, when you connect the first time to a particular server, the system downloads a set of XML files. More or less, at the moment, we have for, um, 50, 60 XML files. In total, 600 of kilobytes is not so heavy. These XML files contain the definitions of all the operators we develop. One XML files for each operator. Using these XML files, the terminal are able to understand the argument of each operator, the mandatory values, arguments, the related values, and so on. So, the first time you access the server, the system download remotely the XML files. If you want to update, it is completely transparent to the user. And if you want to update manually this phase, you can use update-f in order to re-download the XML files if you think that some modification could be happen. Other feature of the terminal, history navigation with the arrows, history recursive feature with control and R. Control A and E to go to the beginning or to the end of your statement. History expansion with uh, exclamation mark and so on. You can also define, as I said before, in your dot basher C file, the OPH term environment variables in order to avoid to retype every time these variables when you want to access the terminal. As you can see, in the terminal environment, we have already defined this variable. So this is an example. In your basher C file, you can define all the connect information. So the name of the user, login name, password deed, server hosts, the port, and so on. So this concludes my first part of the explanation of the terminal. So then I can give you some much more advanced concept on the utilization of the terminal. So to improve the OPH term user experience, we use some environment variables. For example, PH session ID, OPH current working DIR, and OPH data cube. The OPH session ID, ID identifies the session of the user. The second, the current working DIR. 
and the third is the last data cube you produced. So pH session ID will always point, will always point to the current session which groups or related jobs. If the user leaves it empty, a new session will be created with the first request and all subset requests will be grouped in that session. So as you can see, we have no session here. We can launch an operator, generic operator. A new session is created, and now you have your session. In general, this is transparent to the user. Concerning the current work here, we, it will always point to the current working directory with respect to the Fidia file system. The default value is the root inside the Fidia file system. You can use command as OPH folder, command CD, and the destination path if you want to move from one from a directory to another. It could seem a complex command in order to move from a directory to another, but we all also define an alias, so we can use simply CD as you can do in your bash shell. The data cube, the variable of pH data cube will always contain the persistent identifier of the last produced data cube. It is very comfortable if you want to use a set, a chain of transformation starting from an input. So in case of a pure sequential transformation starting from a cube and originating a cube at each step, this is very useful, this is very, very comfortable. So OPH import NC, for example, with other arguments. We want to subset this cube. We can use simply OPH subset without specifying the data cube, the input data cube. Then we want to, do, to duplicate this data cube. We can use simply OPH duplicate without specifying, once again, the input data cube. Other features of the terminal is the variable substitution. So you can define your variable inside the Ophidia environment. You can use braces or not if you want to, for example, include a space inside the variable name. And variable substitution is recursive until all variables are expanded. So, as I said before, you can also define your analysis in order to simplify the using the utilization of the terminal. For example, set alias, my alias, with a particular operator, with a parameter. Then you can use simply my alias with val2. The system automatically substitute this value inside the related command. Concerning the response, it come, comes in uh, JSON format, as I said before. This is an example. You can use the environment variable of pH term viewer dump if you want to see on the screen this JSON. You can set this variable also with other value, for example, basic that is the default, or colored in order to see the same output in a much, uh, in a user-friendly, in a user-readable format. You can use also extended or extended colored in order to see much more information always extracted from the previous JSON file. So, we implemented also an auto size and auto fit of the output. So in this case, the output are more stretched. So you can use the variable of pH term images with many, with some values in order to visualize the output in using an image. So you can use if it's possible. You can use, for example, save in order to save an image of your 
local hard disk. Open, automatically, automatically open JPEG images file in a separate windows and save them to disk. No op is the default for not saving nor opening images. So concerning the configuration and installation, the executable file of the terminal will be stored in the path installation prefix. Its name is oph underscore term. Inside the home of the user, you find a file dot .oph term history, and then a directory containing all the XML related to the operators. As I said before, is it a very, very simple. It is very simple to install the terminal. We provide also an RPM. And inside our virtual machine, you will find not only the terminal, but the entire Ophida stack. So thank you very much.